Alright folks, thanks for checking in on Stormtopia.com and Stormtopia.com Facebook page. We're gonna have a daily weather update. Uh these spring storms have been very well very well known to be quite tricky in terms of forecasting. And this one was no exception. It certainly underperformed in snowfall and my snowfall expectations, I won't lie. So let's get to uh, a radar um loop of the entire event as we go on and in for time. Here you see last night. It was moving in as primarily rain. And what essentially happened here was the, the two low pressure centers never really combined to allow one mass of precipitation moving across the southern mid-Atlantic um, with northwesterly winds kicking in and changing the rain over to snow from north to south. That, that never happened. Instead, it ended up being one system that was almost entirely rain and one system that was almost entirely snow. And they say separate. Here you see, as of, I'm not sure when quite this is, um, but here you see around some time <laughs> that uh, the, the the two systems are kind of breaking apart, and that was when you know you had a bust. And here we had the system to the north. It was still still occurring the way we thought it would in terms of rain, in terms of s rain going back on over to snow. But in terms of the evolution, that'll be one big mass of precipitation that never occurred. Because once you get down towards, you know, North Carolina, it w there was no precip, which is what we thought it would be raining while these folks were snowing, which would de feed the moisture, which never occurred. The storm was also further north than expected. But here we are, enough yapping. Here we see the snow from West Virginia, Northern Virginia, then back through Baltimore, Washington. They saw decent snow. And you did verify your 2 to 5 inches back in West Virginia. You saw you seen consistently seeing decent snow. Y if you play the loop, you can see how West Virginia does get there 2 to 5 inches. Okay. There's no doubt about that. In terms of Central Virginia, uh, yep, they got their lower end of the 2 to 5 inches. But in terms of Richmond, where I thought, okay, you guys are going to be on the border of 2 to 5 and less than 2 inches, you guys ended up getting less than 2 inches and almost nothing. You were rained for almost all the event. Then you set some mix, and now you're getting over some snow on the back end. But based on the radars, you won't l allow that to last for very long. So what happens is, what ends up occurring is the storm is now uh, moving offshore, and snowfall accumulations, that's how things went. That's wrap up for the storm. Uh, let's see what uh, we still have to look at in the uh, near term. And we have a lot to look at. Let's uh, start ourselves off here at uh, Sunday, um, well, obviously, uh, this would be this afternoon, we've got a um, bubble high uh, that's allowing a cold circulation of air into the Midwest and Northeastern United States. As we make our way out into Monday, that pattern will not be shaken. As we make our way out into Tuesday, the pattern doesn't shake yet, but what ends up occurring is with still unseasonably cold air across the Great Lakes into the northeast. We're seeing a new storm developing. If you turn your attention to the northern Ozarks, back into the southern plains and the far southern heartland, you can see we're getting precipitation forming. A low pressure center is moving southeast of Oklahoma City. And on the well northwest flank, winds out of that unseasonably cold air are allowing the precipitation to change over to snow in western Kansas. And that moves north as potentially blizzard conditions, turning rain to heavy snow with uh, even blinding snow in the St. Louis metropolitan area. And this is, of course, the NAM model that you're seeing right now. And then that moves across the Ohio Valley, perhaps not blinding. Meanwhile, just plain old heavy rain as it moves across uh, the East Coast. But what the GFS wants to do is very different here. Let's take a look at the GFS. And here we are out to uh, the storm. What happens here, it brings it offshore with almost all rain, and then it loads up a new storm, which is just amazing, okay? And what I want to do here in this video is compare the GFS solution to the European solution for a storm that is likely to form just behind this one, okay? So let's position the uh, pointer correctly, and here we go. Behind that storm, on this would be April 1st, April Fool's Day snowstorm, Look at that. Extremely heavy precip swarms the east coast. Severe weather, potentially major outbreak across the south. Double barrel low. Guess what? Low number two to the west. Great Lakes Cutter. Heavy snow Detroit. All of eastern Michigan gets pounded. Alright. Uh, frame number two.
or model number two. Here we have the European. Brings the low up the coast as one low pressure center. Bombs it as a 984 low pressure center. And then, I mean, this is an absolutely epic storm. Henry Marga City is going to be getting giddy in State College. We're talking about snow getting measured in feet. This is an absolutely amazing storm getting shown on the European. Not the first time this year the European has shown a major storm, as other models have shown also a major storm and then take it offshore. The Euro keeps showing it. That may develop in, the, in terms of the patterns and the guidance. But one thing for sure, every time that Euro showed a major storm, or almost every time, we ended up getting a major East Coast storm. So we'll see if, let's see, 10... Mm, We'll see if 14 years later another April Fool's Day storm ends up happening across the East Coast. But if it does, it will be epic. Uh, we're talking superstorm types, well, not superstorm, but semi superstorm type strength for this kind of a thing. I mean, that is an absolutely epic storm. So we'll see what happens. Stay tuned uh, to stormtopia.com. Never a better time to do so. And stay safe. Enjoy your day.